My name is Al Byrne. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Patients Out of Time. We are one of the sponsors. The other sponsors here, as you see in the brochures, are the University of Virginia's Medical School, Law School, and Nursing School, as well as the Virginia Nurses Association. Yeah, I, I do thank all of them. And, and I, I'll point out just, and you'll hear me say a lot of things about progress in the medical marijuana arena. Nine years ago, when we approached UVA to do a similar conference, they just didn't want to talk about it. And now they're sponsoring one. So th there's been progress not only in the political arena, but also in the, in the uh, university thinking arena, academic arena. Things have changed, and they're starting to get it. They really are. Uh, Patients Out of Time was founded unofficially in 1990, when Marilyn and I, working for the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, sponsored a normal conference in D.C. that featured the first five federal marijuana patients. Um, then we brought them together, we put them on a panel, we interviewed them, and we were lucky enough to have C-SPAN cover the whole thing. And this, this coverage by C-SPAN, believe it or not, really sort of opened the door to what we're doing here today. Normal received over 40,000 phone calls in three days because of that show. And the phone calls continued. Uh, they came from all over the country, all over the world. C-SPAN kept showing that show for 30, 30 days. It was a remarkable uh, reaction from the public. And it gave those of us that were there, the five patients, and Marilyn and I and a few others, the opportunity to, uh, uh, to join together officially and see if we couldn't do something to to raise the awareness about therapeutic cannabis as well as we had done on that one, one weekend in, in D.C. So in 95, we formed ourselves up as a Virginia corporation, which we are today. We're a nonprofit corporation. Um, we are also a, a federal 501c3 charity. So uh, we have the blessing of our government to do this, and I thank them very much for the tax-exempt sta status. It has helped. Um, the 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 composition of patients out of time is that it's an all-volunteer force. No one has ever taken a dollar for anything that they've done. Uh, we have reimbursed each other for expenses that have been extraordinary, but nobody takes any money to do this work. Um, the folks involved, the five, there are five legal patients out of the seven left alive that work with us. Two of them you will meet this weekend. Um, the, the other folks that are on our boards of advisors and directors, some of them are here and you will meet them, um, are all volunteers. They are, in general, uh, professionals, either MDs, PhDs, or RNs, a couple of lawyers in there just to keep us out of trouble. And then we work to educate you, especially healthcare professionals, but the general public as well, and the press, about the benefits and the dangers of therapeutic cannabis. So today, at this conference, which is the third in our series, you will hear both sides of the story, I hope. And the story I want you to hear, and the way these speakers have been, not instructed, but told that this is how we do business, is that this shall be, over the course of the weekend, uh, an apolitical conversation. This is not about political science, this is about real science. You're going to hear from researchers who do real work in real science, that can be replicated and peer-reviewed and actually come out the other end with, with a blessing instead of the stuff the government hands us. You're going to hear from real clinicians who deal with real patients every day. And then you're going to hear from real patients who use marijuana as young as two years old and as old as whoever the oldest is here, but I won't bring that up. <laughs> Dr. Mishulam passed away. And so with that, I will... Uh, I will uh, tell you what I think about a few things, and then I will turn the podium over to our, uh, our keynote speaker, Dr. Mishulam. Um, over these years, as the, uh, the research that I referred to has plodded along, and now it kind of trots along, uh, this research on cannabis and its uh, therapeutic uses has made it pretty obvious to the population of countries around the world that something is wrong in the United States of America. And I refer back to a fellow back around the Civil War time in our country, a guy named Carl Schultz. He was a Civil War general, he was a US Senator, and he was also the Secretary of the Interior. And this is what Carl said. He said, our country, right or wrong, you've heard that, huh? Here's the second part of that. 
When right, to be kept right. When wrong, to be put right. Some wrong in America. Cannabis has worked for a, a lot of people for a long time. The data, the patients, and history attest to this. The U.S. government, however, at least parts of it, go to extraordinary length to keep knowledge from its citizens. And I, I, uh, that's my opinion, but it's not just my opinion. Here's what uh, an unnamed U.S. official said to Newsday magazine. We lie, speaking about the federal government, we lie by not telling you things. We don't lie by telling you things that aren't true. There's your government. Barry McCaffrey, remember him? Barry McCaffrey, I nicknamed him Fibber McCaffrey. He never, he never answered up when I called him that. When he was growling out there in the past that there was no one, no organization that had ever endorsed therapeutic cannabis at any time for any reason, patients at a time knew better. And we published a list of organizations that support the use. At the time, it was quite small. It might have ran, in my recollection, maybe no more than 20 organizations, but that was significant. And now it's in the hundreds. And Barry McCaffrey has shut up about nobody supporting organizations. We don't hear that anymore, do we? The professional healthcare community has, rather, has spoken rather authoritatively um, in professional venues about the efficacy of can therapeutic cannabis. But uh, lawyers, bureaucrats, and law enforcement keep saying that it is not medicine. How would they know? How would they know? The answer is most of them don't know. Uh, they just do their job. And trust me, this war on marijuana is a jobs program of enormous significance. Um, and that job is to uphold the laws and the policies of our land. I don't blame the police and the law enforcement people for doing their work. That's their job, and they do it well, and, you know, I don't want them hurt. I don't want anybody in trouble. I don't want anything going wrong out there with them or us. And in private, when we talk to these people, these law enforcement officials, heads of state police, federal judges, magistrates, Supreme, they're not Supreme Court, but federal judges that are on the bench forever, in private, they tell us something is wrong in America. Every level says that. The Customs Service, the Coast Guard I've talked to, the Navy, they all say that. Now, I think the ongoing problem with marijuana is the continuance of a fraudulent image put forth by our federal government. It's bad. It's the evil weed. You've heard all that stuff. It's an image of delirious killers, of reefer madness infamy, and of passive soldiers in Vietnam. All U.S. leaders have ignored all U.S. and foreign commissions and blue, and blue ribbon panels who universally recommended a medical control model of outright decriminalization. These studies, a dozen or more, some lasting years and encompassing thousands of pages of data, have three do common denominators in their conclusions. The premise of cannabis being of no medical value was wrong, the arguments for cannabis prohibition flawed, and that a need and a wrong needed writing. Our job at Patients Out of Time is to overcome the jack X of federal and state government by making you guys smart. And I want, you to, I want you to listen to the words of another one of our conservative leaders. Here's what he said. I decided what I should do is put my health first. Rudolph Giuliani, the leader of 9-11. I'm going to put my health first. And as we begin the process of educating you today, I want to be clear about, again, what we do here. The faculty will discuss real science, not political science. And for the third time since the spring of 2000 in our first conference of this series, we will construct in this public forum a record of research that shall outlast and overpower ignorance, image, and duplicity. And finally, you can't come to Charlottesville and not hear from Thomas Jefferson. And here's what Tom said. He said, enlighten the people generally, and oppressions of the body and mind will vanish like spirits at the dawn of the day.